Welcome to Digital Marketing Intelligence for Shopify Ask the Experts, our bi-weekly live show and podcast that features expert interviews and case studies to show you what to do and what's new in Shopify and e-commerce digital marketing for 2022 and beyond. Ask questions, suggest topics, and grow faster with actionable insights and proven strategies from the world's leading Shopify and e-commerce marketing experts. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Digital Marketing Intelligence for Shopify Ask the Experts. I'm Marissa Morgan. I'm your show host. I'm also the Director of Business Development here at Engage. On behalf of myself and the entire team at Engage, I'm excited to welcome you to today's episode. We are talking about driving faster store growth with creative strategies in a post-cookie world. Our guest will be joining us in just a moment. He'll explain more about what that term means, post-cookie world. We'll learn more about what his company does, and I'm really excited to hear his insights and experience on how to drive your store growth faster with some really creative strategies. Before I introduce you to our very special guest, I want to share that all of this invaluable information is brought to you by Engage. Here at Engage, we are super excited. It is almost the end of April 2022, and coming in May, we are launching our newest app, SMS Messaging for Shopify stores. Right now, SMS Messaging has a 98% open rate compared to email, which is only about 20%. So where do you need to be if your customers are on their mobile devices? You need to be on, on their mobile devices. So our app makes it very easy for Shopify store owners and e-commerce businesses to not only build their customer list faster, but to, but to engage with your customer where they are on their mobile devices, right? help build subscription lists, promote new products with targeted automated messaging. And we're really excited to be rolling out that app in May of 2022. And with that rollout, we are actually offering a 30-day free trial and the opportunity to use 500 free SMS messages as you please to take our app for a test drive. You've got nothing to lose but all the business you currently don't have because you're not using SMS messaging. So stay tuned for more on the Engage SMS messaging for Shopify app that is coming soon. Okay, without further ado, I am really excited to introduce you to today's special guest. He may be getting the award for a guest tuning in from the furthest location from me. He is joining us from Israel today. His name is Maddie Ram. And I asked Maddie, I said, Maddie, I know you're in Israel, but you were just in New York. You've got offices in the Netherlands. Also, prayers out to your family and, you know, co workers and employees in Kiev. You have an office there as well, Israel. Um, Maddie joked that even though he's in Israel and he works all over the world, he thinks his home is really in in maybe 3C on an airplane, seat 3C, because he travels that much. If you don't know who Maddie Rahm is, you need to. He is the CEO of AdScale, which, as I mentioned, is based in NYC, Netherlands, Israel, and also um, Kiev. It is a marketing cloud for e-commerce company that turns your customer data into more revenue and allows you to easily run intelligent campaigns on all channels with one platform. We have a lot in common with AdScale. Uh, he is a high-tech entrepreneur with over 20 years of experience. He is very passionate about building new companies and bringing innovative solutions to the market. And a fun fact about Maddie: he is a huge soccer fan and his favorite team is from Israel. And I'm going to make sure I, I'm, I worked on saying this. Uh, the team is called Maccabi Haifa. How was that, Maddie? Did I do okay? Very well. Big soccer fan. Maddie, I want to welcome you to today's show, uh, Digital Marketing Intelligence for Shopify. And I want to thank you for being our guest expert today. Welcome. Thank you, Marisa. It's great being here. Thank you for hosting me. Absolutely. And thank you so much for joining in from halfway across the world. I am located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Maddie's joining us today from Israel. I think that is so much fun. Thank you for joining us. And 
before we get into today's talk, which is all about driving store growth in this idea of this post cookie world, which you're going to talk a lot more in depth about, can you share with our audience a little bit about your background and what you did before you became the CEO of AdScale and even what you're doing now at, at AdScale for your clients? Quite interesting story. I started my, I'm a software entrepreneur for the last 20 plus years. Uh, I established my first company in 2004. We did uh, risk management. So software for risk management for banks and financial institutes and, and some other institutes as well. Um, my company was acquired in 2011 by Checkpoint. Checkpoint is one of the largest uh, in information security companies in the world, traded in the, in the NASDAQ. I joined AdScale uh, with my team. We uh, started a new division in, Ad, in, so in Checkpoint. And then, uh, and then I stepped out and started uh, AdScale. So I didn't grow in the marketing area, but uh, myself and I, we, are, we call ourselves data geeks. So we basically know <laughs> To do things with data, and, and uh, that's actually the journey I had in the last 20 years. Well, I want to congratulate you on all of your success and all of the success you're having now at AdScale. And I think that you are a perfect guest expert to really join us and share with our audience your insights and your expertise. And we're going to dive now into this topic of a post cookie world. And no, we're not talking about chocolate chip cookies. We're talking about those little things, those pesky things you get asked about on your computer all the time when you're browsing. So we're going to learn how to drive faster store growth, which is obviously a big goal of our series, talking about e-commerce businesses, Shopify stores, how to grow, how to scale, how to adapt and change. And the things that you're here to share with us, Maddie, are what post cookie world actually means. And, and what impact it has on e-commerce advertising performance. So we're going to talk about what that is first and how it's impacting advertising. Then you're going to share with us what first party data means and why it's key to successful marketing. We'll talk a little bit about key performance indicators and how, you know, they are very important, what the most important ones are and how return on ad spend thinking, what that mindset is all about. And then we'll end our talk today uh, with some tips from you on how to create intelligent customer segments and use them to boost performance. I'm excited about today's talk because I'll be honest, Maddie, I don't know too much about this topic. And I do have a lot of experience in digital marketing. So I'm here as your student. I'm ready for you to teach me. Let's just start with the basics. What does it mean, a post-cookie world? What does that term exactly mean? So, <clears throat> post cookie world, uh, sometimes by the way, being called cookieless world, means that uh, we cannot rely anymore on, on the pixel to um, accurately uh, track user behavior on our e commerce store. Now, ever since the internet was invented, the cookie was the main driver for tracking after the user behavior. And the main driver behind the entire personalization uh, industry, whether it is in advertising or in marketing. And without the third, the third party cookie, we just don't have enough information that enables us to uh, create smart advertising and smart marketing. And that makes our lives quite more difficult. Um, the process of cookie-less world started with the regulation. So um, all along the you know last uh, few years, we saw more and more regulations that are restricting the use of uh, user information and actually protecting user privacy. Uh, we know in Europe, we know the GDPR, it is very famous in the US, for instance, the CCPA. And what happened is that gradually uh, companies, uh, browser manufacturers started banning the uh, pixel out. It started with uh, Safari and then moved to Firefox. And then in March uh, last year, just exactly a year ago, uh, Apple stopped sharing the uh, application information with Facebook without the user consent, which made huge a change. And the big, big, big 
uh, issue is still ahead of us because in 2023, Google is going to ban the uh, third-party pixel from, from Google Chrome, which is 70% of all the browsers in the world. Whoa! That's a huge <laughs> yeah. That's amount it. of the, the world of cookies. Hey, you know what's interesting? I felt really empowered when Apple came out with the option to decline or adjust settings the minute I log into something new. I felt like this is great because even though I'm visiting this website, it's for something I'm going to buy one time as a gift for someone random, right? It's a, a neon colored garden hose or something, right? And I don't need ads for neon colored garden hoses popping up every five seconds on my browser when I'm trying to do other things. So I will say as a consumer, I felt really empowered and I really liked that feeling of being able to say, no, do me no, like, no, 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 because it made me realize just, you know, Big Brother or all these people were watching us before and have the option to opt out. But this really does change a lot for e businesses and really all businesses, doesn't it? It changes a lot. And, and I can fully understand the point of view as a consumer. The bad news is that you're not going to stop seeing ads. You're just going to see less targeted ads or less accurate ads. Ah. So <laughs> I think, uh, I mean, I fully understand the issue with user privacy and I fully agree with it. But as a marketeer, and you know, I'm looking at, at the world from the side of the marketeer, as a marketeer, it makes life much more difficult. I mean, we've seen amazing change since, uh, since March last year. Just to give you an, an example, companies who used to do a return on ad spend of say 12x, after the change, last year in March, so a return of 7x, and it never came back to the same level as before. Now, that's I'm part, sorry, part of you, it is the, sorry, you said 12, um, what was the terminology? 12 what? Weeks? A ROAS. ROAS means return on advertising spend. Oh, oh, I didn't hear that. Okay, so I got it. I got it. So that's it was... Israeli accent. Yes. <laughs> I thought you said 12 <laughs> weeks. I'm like, wait, what? How would you measure that? <laughs> Got it. So wait, can you repeat that statistic again for us? Of course. So ROAS stands for return on advertising spend. Yep. It means how many, how much return you get for every dollar you spend on advertising. Uh, what we've seen is that companies that used to do a return on ad spend of 12x, meaning getting $12 back for every dollar they spend on advertising with Facebook, after the change, after March, went down to something between 6 and 7 so that was really dramatic. We saw that across all customers, all over the world. It never came back. Um, I have to um, um, also be honest with Facebook and say that part of the change is the fact that Facebook reduced the attribution window from 28 days maximum to a max of seven days. So that was another factor that impacted heavily the uh, results. And it stayed like that. And all the solutions that uh, we thought might help, like the conversion API, Tappy, mm -hmm. didn't really change the uh, status. So what we're seeing is that the third party, party cookie uh, ban is, is here, it's gonna stay. The impact on the results is dramatic. And we believe that e-commerce websites needs to find new paradigmas, new ideas on how to bring back the results. And we can use it, we, we can do it with the first party cookie. That's first perfect. That, that takes that's perfect. That's the right point. So the solution to really losing all the benefits and all the you know ROI due to third party cookies is this idea of first party data. What does that exactly entail? What is first party data? So first party data is, is my data, is my information, is actually the information that the company collects directly from its customers. In, in e-commerce, Marisa, it means mainly, first of all, the customer information, like mm -hmm. who they are, their contact details, what they buy, where they live, uh, etc. The order information and the product information. It's always a kind of a triangle of customer, product and orders. Now, the amazing thing about this data is that Google and Facebook, 
they they don't have that information simply no, they because don't. they are not connected with the store so it's it's the company's data and with this data they can do a lot of quite amazing things they can create customer segments uh with uh, homogeneous character characteristics and and then they can create product segments and offer that to the relevant customers and they can do that across many channels they can do that across uh, remarketing ads they can do that across new traffic ads by actually asking facebook uh to bring them uh, more of their best customers what, what is called the look alike mm -hmm. look like uh, audience yeah. exactly look like audience if i have let's say i have a, a segment of my top uh, customers in terms of uh, CLV, customer lifetime value. I actually ask Facebook, bring me more of those. Bring me people out that are similar. Bring me people that are similar to my best customers. It's, it's it's a great advantage once you know who are your best customers. It's like a dating app. Bring me more of the tall, dark <laughs> thumbs, right? <laughs> when you uh, put in the filter uh, of what you like. <laughs> I, I'm married I like for this. 30 years. I, I forgot these years, but uh, <laughs> I guess you're right. Um, yeah, this wait, this all makes a lot of sense because you're right. If you think about it, Google and you know Facebook, like they have information that is very different. You know, it's based on our browsing history. It's based on what we click. Just because we click this doesn't mean we like it. Again, maybe we're purchasing it for someone else, but compared to the company knowing exactly what we've purchased in the past, knowing when we joined the company or when we made our first order, often we order, what we order, where we live, um, our shipping zip code, our you know area code, phone number, how often we purchase. These are all things. And obviously our email addresses or cell phones, as I mentioned, it's interesting. So, okay, so we're using first party data now, or we should be, and we can, is that really where we would turn to a company like yours or even like ours? Because we help, right? People be able to, or companies be able to use their first party data, like you said, through different channels, right? Maybe maybe you're not using Facebook or maybe you are, but through SMS marketing or email, things like that, right? Exactly. And I think that there are two things that we need to take in consideration. First of all, as you said, first party data is the new king. It's actually... Um, I think today the best way to uh, create targeted uh, marketing with personalized touch. Second point is that retention is the new acquisition and here's the SMS comes back because um, what we see is that since the, um, since the advertising results are not going to come back and be what they used to be in the past, we need to think on it, when you think about return on investment we need to think about the long term. I mean, not just look at the return on advertising spend, but also look at the expected return on advertising spend when we calculate how often the people will buy again and again. And talking about that, the SMS is, is a great tool to increase the retention. Because as you said, Marisa, you can get into the customers, into the cell phones, and when you use the first party data, you can actually know what is the right time to approach them? I mean, if I'm buying um, uh, something which is consumable, like uh, pet food, for and, and usually the consumption rate is, let's say, every three months, I can remind them two months after the last purchase to buy. It. And I can remind them a few times and, and actually make them buy it with me before they go to my competitors. So retention is the new acquisition, and SMS is a great tool to get to customers and increase the retention. I like that saying, retention is the new acquisition. Because if you think about, and I, and I do know my marketing experience, if you think about the cost that you may have by being a new customer, um, you definitely, once things are all in line, you've got your first party data, it is definitely more efficient to try to keep a customer you already have then, then try to gain a new customer um, because we also know that new customer prospect may or may not purchase, right? They may use a discount code for their first purchase. Uh, they may purchase and then never come back. So you definitely want to create a good customer experience and create this sense of loyalty in order to retain the customers you have. That's definitely the most efficient. 
And also we know that loyal customers, you're a popular man. So, that's okay. I'm so sorry for that. That's okay. That's, that's not going to happen again. You know what's funny? I've been getting more spam likely calls than ever before. And yesterday I got one from Russia of all places. Spam likely from Russia. I was like, well, I'm clearly not going to answer that, especially like with everything going on right now. Um, maybe, maybe they want to recruit you to the army. I mean, it could be nice oh, to great. Them. Yes. No, I'm good. <laughs> I like podcast hosting. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is it's um, we also know like loyal customers. It's that whole like when someone has a bad experience. They tell everybody when someone has a good experience, they don't always tell people. But if someone feels uh, a very strong loyalty towards a company, they're certainly going to sh- for friends and things to that company. So it, it does make more sense to try to continue to retain your loyal customers and build loyal customers versus constantly reaching and looking for more new prospects. It's a lot of work involved with that. Definitely. Acquiring a new customer costs about five to ten times more than retaining an existing one. So that's really that's that's significant. That is significant. Well, let's talk a little bit about the key performance indicators, right? That are the most important in 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 you know viewing performance and 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 what we're doing now in this post cookie world. Uh, and you mentioned the ROAS, return on ad spend based thinking or that thought process. What is, what did, tell us just what is your in on that? Where did, where's, where's that coming from? Okay, so I'll mention three KPIs that I think are the most important ones. And, and let's start with the first one. The first one is the customer lifetime value. Now, it looks quite simple, okay? Of course, customer lifetime value is the most important one, but when it comes to a cookie-less world, we need to look at the customer lifetime value versus the return on ad spend and, and actually a big change our mindset. Let me give you just a mathematic explanation for that or a mathematic sample. Uh, let's say that uh, someone invested uh, just $200 on advertising. He got uh, 10 clients with an average order value of, uh, of, of $1,000. So basic of $100 per, per, uh, per, per purchase. So basically he spent $200, got 10, 10 clients, each one of them bought in $100. He have $1,000 in total, a return on ad spend of five picks. Now, when, when you freeze the picture and you say, okay, I have a return on investment of five picks, you might think it's good. If you might think it's not that good, it's actually quite, quite not good. Uh, and then you have a quite bad picture on your ability to grow your business with advertising. But if we look at the retention part and the customer lifetime value, we might see that uh, within a year, five of them buy again, which makes our total uh, income for this. 10 new clients, uh, already $1,500 and a return on ad spend of 7.5x. And then three of them might buy again on the third time and it makes it 1,800. And then another one might buy again and it makes the total uh, revenue uh, 2,000 and we spent 200 and we got 1,000. So we have a return on ad spend of 10x we need to look at the customer lifetime value and not on the first uh, uh, purchase or us. That's something that I, um, that I really think we need to think about it. We need to think about the expected ROAS and not only the first purchase or us. So customer lifetime value helps us to realize what is the expected ROAS. We might not get it, get it in the first purchase. We might get it in the second, third, or even fourth purchase. But within 12 to, 4, 12 to 24 months, we will see much better return on ad spend. And that, that can make marketing and advertising uh, much more worthwhile than it looks like when we look only on the first purchase. So and, you know, the, and what I can what I can add to that from what I know, it's almost like you've got your initial income and then technically this passive income that keeps coming in. But the one thing you need to do to keep that happening is engage with your customer after they make that order Have your SMS running. You need to remind them, oh, hey, you bought this, you know, this great skin cream a month. So 
if you purchase again for next month in advance, we're going to give you 10% off, right? Or, um, you know, ma making sure that they can track their orders easily. I love to track their orders online or through SMS. You have to make that customer. That's why it's so important, right? To build a great customer experience because you're right. I, that initial purchase really is a new customer testing the water of your your product, but also the experience. Oh, that's that interesting so to think right. about. So customer lifetime value. Okay. Definitely. What you said, Marisa, is so right, because when we look at the, the second KPI that, that plays the most important role, I mean, we are seeing thousands of customers here. And when I look at the new shop, almost always there's only one KPI that tells me how healthy is this shop, and this is the repeat customer rate. I mean, mm. the higher the repeat customer is, the uh, more profitable the store is. So um, the repeat customer rate is, is the KPI that we need to work on. We need to increase the uh, percentage of repeat customers. So that's the second KPI I want to mention. Uh, so. Actually, they are both binded to each other, you know, more repeat customer rate, higher customer lifetime value. So Absolutely. Another very, another very important. And SMS, again, is a great way to increase the repeat customer rate. Mm -hmm. And I think that the third one that I want to mention is the repurchase frequency. Uh -huh. Repurchase frequency stands for, you know, um, what's the median time between two subsequent uh, purchases. And the shorter they are, the more purchases you make in a given time, so in, in a year or so. So SMS could also uh, shorten the time between two uh, subsequent purchases. So mm -hmm. if we look at the customer lifetime value, the repeat customer rate, and the repurchase frequency, and we use SMS and email, but mainly SMS, because as you mentioned, SMS is 98% uh, of the people just see it. If we use it to uh, make retention, the new acquisition, then our return on ad spend will grow and we can make a very healthy marketing fund for our store. So. so we're talking about the three big KPIs that really mean the most for an e-commerce business being the customer lifetime value, the repeat customer, basically, freq uh, not frequency, the repeat customer number, how many people are repetitive customers purchasing over and over, and then the repurchase frequency, how often someone is purchasing. And obviously, the more often they're purchasing, the more they're spending in a year. And obviously, the more likely they are becoming a very loyal customer or your, your product is really solving a pain point for them. So they're not going to go anywhere. This is so interesting. You know what ties into this very nicely is just a quick mention on Obviously, all the changes as a world we've gone through globally over the last two years due to the pandemic, how many people have branched out to purchase things digitally and online that they never would have done before? People started doing groceries, you know, virtually, you know, online, or I know I started buying wine online versus going to the store, you know, so people started buying mattresses, you know, and that's not something you're going to buy often, right? But it's a large ticket item that maybe in the past people wouldn't necessarily go online to buy, but stores are closed, you know, people are worried about sanitary issues. So it's interesting because I think, you know, a lot more people are shopping through e-commerce these days more than, more than they are in person for different items that they didn't used to shop for. So this is the time, right? If you're not yet online, and you're still brick and mortar, it's like you are, you're in the stone age, I feel like. Yes, and I, I think that we can even say that today, almost every business is also an e-commerce business. It's true, it's true. And that's why Shopify has been so successful with millions and millions of storefronts um, between Shopify and Shopify Plus. Um, and companies like what you're doing, what Engage is doing, we're helping these businesses to, um, to be able to integrate all the tools they need, right, into their marketplace so that they have these great uh, KPIs. They have these opportunities to segment their data. Let's let's end our talk talking about segmenting this data, right? So you're all about creating intelligent customer segments. 
So I'm assuming by that you mean, you know, like-minded customers together and then being very targeted, right, with your campaigns and your marketing for these segmented customers, right? Definitely. And uh, when it comes to segmentation, uh, what we recommend is to do it with RFM. I call it RFM, RFM model. Hey, Maddie. Thanks for real, reasons. Maddie, real quick, yeah, I, I just got a... I just got a little uh, poor connection. Okay, so if you can just start, you, start okay your, now? yeah, I think you're good now. Just go ahead and start your thought process over it one more time. Sure. So when it comes to smart Perfect. segmentation, we recommend to uh, look at the uh, segmentation from three aspects. Recency, so how recently a customer has made a purchase. So basically the more recently a customer has made a purchase with the company, uh, the more likely they will uh, continue to keep the business in mind and you know create subsequent uh, purchases. So recency is, is one factor. Second factor is frequency, which means how how often the uh, customer uh, makes a purchase. And uh, the frequency of customers' transaction may be affected by all kinds of factors such as uh, the type of product, or the price point, or when there is a sale, and, and we need to take that in consideration because we can segment like people that are only buying in sale, or people that are only buying in Black Friday, or in specific occasion, or people that are buying more in the summer and less in the winter. So by looking at the frequency, we can create smart segments and target the right people in the right time. And the third one, the M stands for the monetary value. So basically how much money they spend with us. And, uh, and over there, we can also create interesting segments like the, uh, the high sale, we, we discussed customer lifetime value, high customer lifetime value segment. If we have a segment of the people who spend the most with us, we can, uh, we can target them with specific offer or, or big, tip, big ticket buyers. Some people don't buy much, but every, every purchase is a substantial purchase. So we can segment them as well. So we recommend to look at the uh, um, segments and create dynamic segments, which means that uh, in our system, you can create, uh, 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 you can put just the, you know, uh, definitions that uh, the system works for you. Every day, people will get into the segment or will get out of the, the segment based on their behavior. And we strongly recommend to uh, adopt the RFA model. Recency, frequency, monetary. If you look at the three angles, you can create perfect segments that will help you to target the right customer with the right product at the right time. I love this. You're getting me excited about marketing and advertising and segmenting. <laughs> this is so cool. This makes so much sense because when you think about what companies are doing, um, the companies that are dialed in to their digital strategy, they are creating subscription model right? They're doing subscription model based strategy. They're doing, um, they're using SMS to do targeted campaigns, depending on what somebody is buying or how often they're buying, or they're doing auto ship, right? Just charge my card, send me my wine every Thursday, the last Thursday of the month or whatever. They're doing like VIP clubs and giving special discounts to the people who are like the highest customer lifetime value, um, segments. So I like the way you broke this down, our talk today. Like this was very interesting, like three easy KPIs to keep top of mind and then three easy segments. And then remembering that this first part uh, is it's, it's really gold for, for companies and they need to spend, I feel like companies based on this talk, what I'm gathering is companies need to not sit and stress about what they lost with the third party data, but they need to be, like you said, a little more innovative and put a little more effort and energy and thought into how to gather more first party data, because ultimately that's, that's what's going to sustain their business if they use it the right way. The cheese has moved. Now we have to find the new cheese. The cheese has moved and now we have to find the new cheese. I like that. There's a book who stole my cheese. I think I love that. Exactly. <laughs> well, Maddie, this has been a really insightful talk. You have been an excellent guest in terms of helping share your insights and your experience on this post-cookie world that we're now living in and really how to 
how to take the good from the bad, how to pivot and, and where to focus our energies. I think sometimes, um, especially small to mid-sized businesses get very freaked out when these changes happen and they don't exactly know like the clear path you know, in terms of like, well, how do I pivot? What do I do? And I think you gave some great recommendations and examples on how to just take a minute, you know, realize that this is not go. this is a change that's going to continue. Um, so really refocus and almost focus on what you have control over, like that first party data and how to get that and how to use that the right way um, versus trying again to be all over and try everything this is great. This is why uh, people need to delegate and hire agencies, right, to help them um, when they get to these different stepping stones in their business. Let's talk a little bit, Maddie, about how our audience can connect with you if they've enjoyed today's talk. I'd love to share your LinkedIn link if that's okay with you. Perfect. You guys can find Maddie Rom on LinkedIn, and I'll spell his name for you if you're listening on the podcast. Perhaps a colleague suggested this show for you, or you found us on accident. Maybe you're just starting to get into the world of e-commerce and Shopify. You can find Maddie. M-A-T-I is his first name and last name Rom R-A-M on LinkedIn. He is the CEO of AdScale. So of course, let's give a little... Uh, a little homage to what Ad scale, Ad scale is, and you can find Ad Scale at www.adscale.com. That's adscale.com. Uh, let's let's wrap up our talk with just a moment on what exactly Ad Scale does for its clients and who your ideal client is. In case someone is watching, thinking, "Oh, he, what he said's interesting. Maybe I could use his help." Um, who are you looking to help in your um, in your business? So we're helping uh, e-commerce merchants uh, that are wishing to grow their business with, uh, with data. Our platform helps them to, um, first of all, gather the data and then to automatically advertise on Google, Facebook, and Instagram, and also to do email SMS campaigns based on the data. So if you're looking to grow with data and to break the uh, third-party cookie cards, as I call it, I think <laughs> we, are, we are a perfect solution. Fantastic. So if you'd like to learn more, please visit adscale.com and connect with Maddie on LinkedIn. Maddie, any other thoughts you'd like to share with us as we wrap up today's talk? Just to tell you, thank you, Marisa. I enjoyed it very well and uh, we'll be happy to come again. Great oh, great, great. We enjoyed having you on today's show. I think this was a really important topic, especially as we have all seen in the last two to three years, big changes with how information is processed, how information is sold, how information is shared. And as a consumer, we know that there's big been big changes uh, in terms of, you know, opting in and, and choosing whether our information is, you know, bought and sold and shared. So this is definitely a topic that will continue to be of relevance. And it's important to, um, again, I think this was a good talk just to understand that there's really a clear way to move forward from these big changes and to still have success, right? I think that that's definitely the takeaway. You just have to have the right company to help you with the right strategy, like Engage or like AdScale, for sure. Well, Maddie, I wanna thank you so much. I wanna wish you lots of luck, continued luck and success in your business. And uh, yeah, we'd love to have you back on the show in the future to maybe uh, talk about another topic as it relates to Shopify and e-commerce. Thank you so much, Marisa, thank you so You're much. So welcome. Have a great day, Maddie, and thank you so much. Bye -bye. What an excellent guest and such an insightful talk today on not only what post-cookie world that term means, but how right now the gold is really this first party data. And if you know how to use it, you know how to, you know, look at the right KPIs and you know how to segment your customers the right way, how I think you can have even more success for your e-commerce business, whether you're on Shopify or another platform. We're here to help you with all of your e-commerce digital marketing needs. My name is Marissa. I want to thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Digital Marketing Intelligence for Shopify. Our guest was Maddie Rahm from the company of AdScale. If you are interested in learning more about what AdScale does, make sure you connect with Maddie on LinkedIn, M-A-T-I 
R-A-M is the spelling of his name. And of course, I want to invite you to join us on our show. If you're interested in coming on the show to talk about your experience in the e-commerce world, um, how digital marketing strategy has helped you, maybe you'd like to come on as a case study and share a speed bump that you've had along the way of becoming an e-commerce business, I'd love to have you on today's show. Or not today's show, that wouldn't work. Today's show's over. Uh, I'd love to have you on our show in the future. Feel free to connect with me as well on LinkedIn. You can find me by searching the T-H-E Marissa, M-A-R-I-S-S-A Morgan. Gotta love when the original Marissa Morgan's taken. I had to put a the in front of it. That's no fun. But you can find me with two S's, one A, Marissa Morgan, or you can email me at marissa.m at engage.com. That's N-G-A-G-G-E.com. Also, please connect with Engage on LinkedIn. Look for the rainbow colored round cog wheel. That's our icon. Connect with us so you can learn more about our SMS for Shopify messaging app that's coming very, very soon in May of 2022. Everybody, on behalf of myself and the entire team at Engage, I want to thank you so much for joining us for today's show. And I want to wish you the best of luck in your e-commerce business. Remember, when you have questions about your digital marketing strategy, you always want to turn to Engage. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you soon.